What do you do when you are burnt out? What do you do when you feel like there's nothing left to give? Sometimes we can feel burnt out in whatever area of our lives. Sometimes it can be through serving in church. Sometimes it can be through our careers. Sometimes we can feel burnt out in our relationships or friendships. Sometimes it feels like we have given and given and given and we keep on giving and giving. And sometimes we are giving, giving from a place where we feel empty, like we have nothing left to give. Every person in this world has de experienced a degree of burnout. Sometimes you come home from work and you are just finished. You can't do anything. You can't think of anything. You don't feel like doing anything. You're just tired. You're, you don't want to talk to anyone. You don't want to watch TV or anything. You just want to be left alone. And sometimes you are not afforded that luxury. Sometimes you have other responsibilities that you need to get on with, such as your children or your other commitments. Or if you're serving in church, you have to focus on that. And sometimes you can feel so overwhelmed because you just feel tired, perpetually tired, and you don't know what to do next. Sometimes you feel like quitting or you feel like taking a step back, but you might feel a sense of guilt in that you shouldn't do it because you love what you do or you love the way that you commit yourself to other things but at the same time you don't know if you can give of yourself on the level that you expect of yourself and in that place you don't know what to do and i'm going to be reading a scripture from isaiah chapter 40 and i believe that this scripture also deals with a degree of burnout because in this context Isaiah is busy talking to the Israelites who had just experienced their judgment where the Assyrians came and took them into captivity. And in chapter 40 onwards, Isaiah ends up encouraging the nation of Israel. And this is what he says in Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 28. It says, Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Reading that scripture should have given you a bit of energy in a way, a bit of encouragement, knowing that God is always with you. But it's so interesting how in the scripture, we are given an insight into how people can feel, how you might be feeling as well. Because it says here that he gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. Now, this is something that we can feel, especially when we are burnt out. We feel overworked. We feel that we don't have enough to give. Or sometimes the demands of this world, the demands of our family, the demands of our commitments, our friends, and whoever places a demand on us, far exceeds the supply that we can give. And given this world that we live in, this overworked world, it is very easy to come to a point where you just feel burnt out. You don't have enough to give. And sometimes you are required to give from a position where you don't have enough. So what do we do when we are feeling burnt out? The first thing that we need to do is simply to surrender. Yes, we need to surrender. Now, a lot of you might think that surrender basically means that we just have to give up. To give up, wave the white flag and basically say, you know what, I'm done. I've given up. I've, I'm quitting. I'm going to just go into isolation and not give of myself again. I'm going to refuse to go to work. I'm going to refuse to commit myself to church. I don't want to get into this position again where 
people take advantage of me. And sometimes that's how it feels because sometimes you give of yourself and you don't know whether people genuinely appreciate you or if they are just relying on you for your efforts. Basically taking credit or taking advantage of your efforts, of your work, of your work ethic and basically piggybacking off of that. But that's not the kind of surrender that I'm talking about. I'm not saying that you should give up and that you should quit. But rather, we should surrender everything to the Lord. What do you mean by surrender? When we surrender things to the Lord, we basically tell ourselves and we tell God, my hands are too small to handle all of this. But your hands, O Lord, are big enough to handle any trial and any circumstance. So with all the stuff that I have to deal with, with all the problems that I have to deal with, I leave it in your hands, God. That is what it means when we surrender. You know the song, the wonderful hymn that says, I surrender all. It basically, it's basically talking about, not that we give up, but rather we surrender everything. We surrender our cares, we surrender our dreams, we surrender our desires, we surrender our pain, we surrender our hurts, we give everything to God. And that in itself is one of the best things that you can do. Because not only does it take a huge weight off your shoulders, but it also makes you realize that you are not alone. God is right there with you. In whatever work you're doing, in whatever task you are committing yourself to, God is always with you, ready, willing, and able to help you in whatever situation you might find yourself in. Your hands are too small for some of the things that you go through. So why don't you give your trial, your circumstance, the thing that seems to be drawing so much of your energy, your time and your resources. Why don't you take that and give it to God? Give it into God's hands and let Him help you to accomplish the task, to accomplish whatever you put your hands to, to help you to deal with the situation, to give you ideas, to tell you what to say. We have the best ally by our side. So the question remains, why aren't you leaving things in God's hands? Sometimes we feel a sense of pride that we can do everything by ourselves. We can take everything into our hands and we don't need to rely on God. You will find out very quickly and in a hard way as well, how far you can go without God. When we try to keep everything in our hands, we eventually will start dropping everything. Think of it, if you have to carry your entire backpack, let's say you have a backpack, you're going to work, you're going to school, or you're going to church, whatever you carry. Imagine if you had to carry all of that stuff with your hands. Eventually, you're going to start dropping things and eventually you're going to need someone to help you. Likewise with God. Sometimes it's life. You have so many things that you have to juggle. So many things that you have to worry about. So many, so many responsibilities that is on your head. And sometimes it's too much for us to bear. This is where we need to recognize our own futility. And rather take some of the stuff that we've been juggling and carrying and leave it into God's hands. God will show you ways to deal with situations, with circumstances. And he will teach you how to Ensure that you give off your best in all of your responsibilities. The next thing that you need to encourage yourself to do is to depend on Him. You know, we humans are very interesting creatures. We say we trust God, but we end up doing the opposite. Sometimes you do exactly as I said, to surrender things to Him. But the problem is, we surrender a care, we surrender a worry, we surrender something to God, and then a few seconds, a few minutes later, all of a sudden we start taking stuff out of God's hands. 
we start taking those worries back. We start taking those cares back. We start taking those feelings back that we've left in God's hands, thinking that we can possibly handle it better than God. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've given stuff to God? You've given your cares, you've given your worries, you've given your problems, you've prayed to God, you've fasted, you've cried out to God about a specific problem or a specific thing that you're facing. You've left it in His hands and then you're trying to pull it back out of His hands. The reason why we do this is sometimes we like to have that sense of control. Like me, in my own life, this is one of my biggest flaws, is that I like to ensure that I have control over things. Not in a manipulative kind of way, but to make sure that I have a handle on things. In other words, I don't want to be surprised by anything that can just pop up. I must have a plan A, B, C, D, and E. And I know that many of you are like that as well. So you can imagine, when I try to leave things in God's hands, and all of a sudden something comes up or I start thinking the wrong thoughts and then all of a sudden I start bringing those cares and those problems back into my own hands and I'm trying to figure out a solution or trying to find a way out from the problem that I'm facing. And I end up going back to square one where I refuse to surrender things to God. The problem is that when we surrender things to God, we also need to depend on Him. We must remember that God knows what is best for us. God has the full picture of every circumstance, every problem you're facing. He sees things that you don't see. He hears conversations that you don't hear. The people that you think are the greatest things in sliced bread, the girl or the boy that you think is the person that you need to marry, God has the bigger picture. God sees the full picture and He knows how to deal with situations much better than you. You are trying to do things in your own strength, in your own will, in your own way, with limited information, whereas God has the full picture. So why don't we leave it to Him? Why don't we leave our plans, our purposes, our dreams and desires in God's hands? Why don't we do that? He can show us the best way to achieve them. He can guide us. He can lead us and direct us. I mean, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. We can make our plans, but the Lord ultimately directs our steps. And if God has the bigger picture, if God has the full picture, he will ensure that we walk on the path that is best for us. If we try to run into a forest where we have no map, where we have no idea where we are going, we will eventually and inevitably get lost. But if we run into a forest knowing that God has already planned the way for us and He tells us to walk with Him, then we end up navigating the forest of our lives without hindrance. Sometimes we like to run into situations when God is telling us to walk. Sometimes that is the reason why we are burnt out, because we're trying to get to places quickly. We try to get to places in record time, whereas God is saying, walk with me. God's not telling you to run with him. He's telling you to walk with him. And that's the problem with us as humans. We feel so limited. We feel that we need to prove ourselves to other people. We need to get things done in record time. And as a result, we try to take things out of God's hands into our own hands. And we end up not depending on Him, but we depend on our own ability. And we will find out, one way or another, that our own ability can only take us so far. That is why we need to walk with God, with patience, with understanding, trusting in Him that He knows what is best for us. When we try to take things back from God, we are only interfering with the solution that He wants to bring and show us. And the last thing that you need to think about, the last thing that you need to do when you are faced with burnout, is trust Him. This is the most important thing you can do when you are faced with burnout. Trust God. When you leave things in His hands, trust Him that He knows what He is doing. 
Sometimes he might ask you to do things that don't make sense. Sometimes he will prevent you from getting involved in things that you really want to get involved in. And sometimes you can try so hard to get involved in something and he puts a stop to it. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter which method you try, nothing works. And let me tell you, if you are faced with a situation where you're trying everything and nothing is working, leave it be and trust God that there is a reason why things are not working out. You must remember, God loves you. He cares for you. He is intimately acquainted with you. He knows you in and out. So when we give our worries and our cares to Him, He will handle it. God does not want you to run into exhaustion. I'll say that again. God does not want you to run into exhaustion. God does not want you to get burnt out. God does not want you to live a stressful and tiring life. He wants you to live a restful and energetic life. In the world that we live in, we are stressed. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to get rid of... You need to do tasks A, B, C, D, and E by before 9 o'clock. And now you're caught in this rat race of a world that wants everything quickly. And sometimes you are pushed beyond your limits. And when you are pushed beyond your limits, not working sustainably, you end up desecrating your own character and desecrating your own work ethic because you are not able to deliver to the level that you know you can do, you end up producing substandard results. And this is something that God does not want us to do. God wants us to run well. He wants us to run our race well. He wants us to produce good fruit. And we cannot do that if we are always stressed, if we are always exhausted and tired, and if we are always burnt out. So how do we trust in God? How do we leave things in his hands. What are we to do? We need to rest in him. You may have reached the end of your rope. You may have reached the end of your supply. But thanks be to God that we serve a God who is infinite. He has infinite supply. And when we go to him, when we choose to recharge ourselves in him, he will fill us up with his power, with his rest, with his energy. And he will ensure that we remain fruitful. But we can only remain fruitful if we remain in him, if we spend time with him, if we pray to him, if we read his word and remind ourselves about our position in God. That is how we can overcome burnout. We must remember Isaiah 40 verse 30 and 31. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If there's anything you should be running after, anything you should be waiting on, wait on the Lord. Don't don't wait on your work. Don't wait on your friends. Don't wait on your family. Don't wait on your dreams. Don't wait on your desires. Don't wait on all these things. The only thing you should be waiting on and resting in is the Lord. Why? Because when you do that, you will renew your strength. You will feel yourself becoming stronger. You will feel yourself having more energy to do things. You will feel yourself being filled with resource, with new ideas, fresh ideas. And you won't be working out of stress. You will be working out of rest. A confident trust in the Lord that because he's handling your problems and because he is with you, you are able to deal with tasks effectively and efficiently. And as a result of that, you will mount up with wings like eagles, flying over what other people are drowning in, flying over your problems, flying over your issues, flying over the circumstances. You will run and you will not be weary. If you need to do things quickly, 
God's strength is within you to help you to do that task quickly. God's strength is within you to ensure that you do it well. That's how you can run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. That is the promise that we have in God. The question is, do you trust Him enough to give all of your cares, all of your worries, all of your problems to Him? We must remember, God loves us. He cares for us. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. There were times in Jesus' life Himself where He had to separate Himself from people and commune with God, get recharged by God in a way. Likewise, we need to do the same. If the Son of God had to commune with His Father, how much more do we as children of God need to commune with our Father? You may be feeling burnt out today, not having enough to give. There may be people de placing demands on you, pulling at you from each end. My friend, you have a friend that will never pull on you, and he is God Almighty. The question is, will you turn to him? Will you ask him for help? Will you give him your cares, your worries, your problems, your dreams and your desires? Will you yield everything into his hands? Will you surrender everything that you are juggling right now? Will you depend on him? Will you trust him? I encourage you to start doing that. Because as you involve God more and more and more in your life, you will find out that burnout ends up occurring less and less and less in your life. There will be times, maybe later on in your Christian walk, where you feel burnt out. When that happens, realign yourself to God. Wait on Him and not on the promise, not on circumstances, not on your dreams or desires. Wait on the Lord and He will renew your strength. <laughs>